Hey guys, here we are on the 710D backhoe again. John Deere 710D. Uh, I promised that I would do the cylinder rebuilds on this. Okay, so here's the cylinders we need to rebuild. Both stabilizer cylinders left and right side. And I'll show you why they need to be rebuilt. And it's a very common problem on backhoes. You'll see it a lot. Uh, the swing cylinders both need to be repacked. And then I was just informed, uh, the owner just pulled up in his pickup here a minute ago, that the uh, Digmore... John Deere, a lot of guy John Deere guys had called these a Digmore cylinder. And if you're a, a case guy, that's an extend a hoe. Uh, you can see where he's got, you can see that fitting up there, it's capped. It was leaking off, so they just capped it. The boom just kept leaking down so fast they couldn't, uh, he said, fix that one too and re -plum it. I said, no problem. So, um, we've had quite a busy morning. Uh, had a uh had a outfit over in langell valley a big livestock yard and they've got i don't know so they've got a lot of problems over there right now i spent all the morning on the phone ordering parts for them and then i went out to another another feed lot over here and uh they've got a jcb loader you know if you guys have seen the 541 loaders that i've been working on these guys have two of them one of them's an 08 one's a 13 they're both 54170 agri plus loaders and uh, the 8 is in significantly worse shape than the 13. But the 08, he was getting a low engine oil pressure warning in the cab. And we finally wiggled the sensor, the oil pressure sending unit, goes into the uh, side of the engine block and found it was the sensor internally had a short in it. And so figured that out and finally made it back here to the shop to... Uh, Start working on this. So anyway, on this, on these cylinders here, if you can see, right here, let me get my flashlight to get this more direct light on it. See that big gouge right there? That's what takes out them rod seals on stabilizer cylinders. These guys get in the rocks or something, and and a rock hits it or something. And that's what happens right there. And if there if there's multiple multiple you know scars all over it, it's these rods are expensive. These chromed rods, these big bigger cylinder rods are really expensive. You can look at a lot of money on fixing one of these. Here's the actual <laughs> the dust seals clear down here. See on the end of the rod. But what I do on these, and I always tell the owners that. Okay, if you got a gouge like that, I'll take a die grinder with like a uh, a lapping wheel or something, you know, and I clean this up and take the, all the sharp edges. You'll have a little low spot there, but what what it does, it'll seep a little bit. It'll seep. It won't really leak real bad like this, but it'll just kind of be. A, it, it, you'll have a little seep there, but it won't pour oil out like this. And most of the guys go for it. They say just do that. We're not buying a thousand dollar rod for that cylinder. Just clean it up the best you can, and reseal it. So, I'll show you how to do that here shortly. I do a lot of them like that. And I'm feeling a pretty good scratch on the bottom of this cylinder too. On that rod. So, alright, well I'm going to get busy and get my wrenches together. Kind of pull this line here. Looks like a one inch. Both ends are. Sometimes you can take... Sometimes you can take this hose off here. And then tie the lever back if you're by there if you're by yourself, which I've done before. And then with the valve in that position, you can put air into this and force all the oil back into the tank without having to make a big, big huge mess. So I'll see if I can do that.
Okay, let's get a choker set around it. I want to try to get two straps. on the center of gravity wasn't very close. That's a little better. Oh, the never-ending leaking drizzling See all the milkiness in this oil? The oil is just terrible on this thing. kind of sometimes like cases they'll use a set screw that goes through the corner of the, the head nut to hold them sometimes you gotta break these loose with an air hammer which is going to be the case with this one the stinking light back in. <clears throat> if people think I got bad working conditions. They don't really, some of you might, some of you don't know what, what hard working conditions are. The company I used to work at, the first shop they put me in, didn't even just this sheet metal it's a sheet metal steel building it gets 10 below zero up here in the winter time and the dumb bastards had built the driveway and the, the parking lot around the shop up higher than what the shop sat so if it did snow it would thaw out in the day or whatever and the water would run in the shop you'd have to come in there and break ice to work in there they didn't even have a heater first two years i worked in that shop they didn't even have a heater for me so this is like paradise compared to what I used to do. No lights in there. So I'm not bitching at all. Oh, holy shit. Really? See what I'm saying about air hammers? You just can't believe the amount of force that they have on them. Yep, babe. You motherfucker. 
Holy shit. Well, that cat's on her wasn't that tight. Well, I've had enough messing around with you. Get on my nerves. Piss me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's coming loose. I don't know if my pipe wrench might have been partially hitting the barrel or what. And she's gonna drizzle oil everywhere. Okay. Stuck in there pretty good, isn't she? Shove it all the way in. Move any at all? Oh, not so you'd ever know it, huh? Some of these John Deere cylinders had a tool you stuck in the head to collapse a little spring and then you could get the head out so that might be what's holding us up. That's exactly what it is. There's a snap ring in there. Okay. I see it now. So tap the head back the other way. up against it pretty hard and I don't want to beat on that too hard there maybe put this back on there and then hit it that way you don't screw up the threads There it goes. Oh. All right. Now, what do we got? Should be able to shove the head on back, though. There's my punch at. Let's 
shove it on past the snap ring and then then you can get in there to the snap ring see now where's the end of the snap ring at let me guess it's on the top This is going to be rusted in there. I'll show you another trick on these cylinders. Take a die grinder with a flapper wheel and clean this up. It'll come out of there a lot easier. Water and oil and water and cylinders. Alright, she ought to come out of there now. We want to clean that up. Shove it on in. Boy, yeah, see that rust? You have a hard time getting your piston right, so pass. Clean that out. area up real good. The flapper wheel. Best you can. It's kind of hard to get in there. Another thing that snap ring groove will do, the head of that is going to keep hammering on that with, you know, every time you use that cylinder. And what it'll do is it'll rear group. It'll ridge this up right where that snap ring is. I've seen it do that real bad where you can get the piston out of it. Uh, I got to a spot where I can't move nothing here. Tighten my vice up a little bit. hard ass okay There she goes. Uh. All right. Woo. Ah. This 
see what the barrel looks like. Need to clean this dude out with that rust settled in there, and we're gonna take a ball hone and hone this cylinder out. Other than that, it looks like it's in good shape. It's just got rust here on the end. Now these dirty bastards here can be tough. Huh, babe? You know, I don't know who sent this to me. They sent me, sent me a new adapter. Sure appreciate it. Hi oh, Days. She was nice to us, huh? Most of the time deer really likes to put a lot of Loctite on these and they can be just plain miserable trying to get them out of there. Sometimes you just gotta use heat and there ain't no other way around it. I've got no or I've heated that bolt up cherry red hot. Two inch socket. There we go. Probably don't get enough air to run that big gun. Right. Well, I'm getting in the back anyway, so I might as well start it up. Hit on a frosty morning. Trap's kind of in the way there a little bit. Guess I'll go out here maybe. Oh, I'm going too far with my vice. I gotta get my ass used to this cold shit again. Get more done when it's cold because I gotta work harder, stay warm.
He good to me now. not gonna uh, spin off there like I want it to. There we go. Oh, my hand sticking to the wrench. Uh, okay. Need something like a Punch. Let's get a blunt punch. Kind of vibrate on that head a little bit and shove it in there past the snap ring. Where oh where did the other end of the hose go? it in there pretty bad well, at least it's happening looks like it's gonna cooperate maybe Okay. Boy, that rust is. When they start rusting up like that, you got a rod seal leaking in your. When it's leaking like that, especially that stabilizer folds up up in the air like that. That water, when it rains and shit and snows and sits on top of that head of that cylinder, it's just gonna go right into the cylinder. So when you got a leaky cylinder. And you know it's leaking if you can at night or something don't leave the backhoe sitting there with the stabilizers up in the air so the water runs down it or fix the leak sometimes they can be kind of a bear to get them past all this rust to get like this. Uh, finally starting to warm up out here a little bit, huh, Daisy girl? Uh, colder than a witch's tit out here. Call it finally came loose. Is that still a lot of rust in there? Boy, it's this one might be fun to get out of there.
come past all that shit. A little bit of a rust ridge there. Up pretty good. I'm gonna have to clean that rust up a little better, scratch it up or something. snap ring will wear on that as that head comes back and forth when that cylinder is constantly stroking and that head will come up against that snap ring too and it'll make a ridge right there and this one don't really have it the stabilizer cylinder don't get used that much but cylinders of high use I've seen that before and had to take a die grinder and then shave that ridge down so you could get that piston past it Good rust ring there. Well, let's try her again. Or is it did last time? Uh. Uh. There we go. All right in the dirt. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay. I'll take a hone and See, so yeah, right in here. Need to clean this out real good before we go back together with it. These are nice and shiny.
Oh, come on. Okay, let's get a little compressor up again. Uh-oh. Cold, nothing wants to work anywhere. Nothing wants to work. Take this. Oh, 
barrels aren't very heavy. When it's all put together, it's heavy. Now, take our packing on the head here is just a big o-ring and it's just there's a backup ring in there too but it's just coming apart in pieces okay this one the rod seal still in this one it did come clear out of the head on the other one. I'm going to clamp it here, but I don't need to clamp it very tight on them threads. Just barely. Shouldn't take much. Okay. Should have kind of a double. Let's see here. Got this pick here. Backer bring below it. Your lip. Just think about which way your oil is going. So this, this is facing the oil side, the lip. Okay. And then this little backup ring will sit in a groove here. Now just keep in mind, every cylinder is not the same. They all have different arrangements of seals. This is for this particular application. But nine times out of ten. Well, about every time, a lip seal is going to be lip faces towards the oil. I just take them like that. This is the big lip seal for the piston, for the head, not the piston. We already pulled the piston seals out. There's a big wear ring in there. I don't know if we'll, we'll see how wear will. A lot of times you don't mess with them. Sometimes you do. I gotta get this one out, but it's just a big wear ring for the rod. I probably won't even mess with it to be honest with you. It's a if it was a crowd cylinder on the boom that was used up and down, up and down, up and down constantly, I would expect to see a lot of wear. But common sense tells me it's a stabilizer cylinder, so there's probably gonna hardly be any wear there. It gets shoved down and it stays there until the guy picks it up and moves to the next dig site. So they don't get used very much. Well, 1200 hours, that backhoe's got like 1200 hours on it, so I know it doesn't get used very much. here Let's take it like that pop it out of there that's your dust seal not your rod seal those chevron ones there those are your rod seals those are the actual rod seals to keep the oil from coming out this is your dust seal. This keeps the water intrusion and dirt from going in. That's why the lip faces this way, to keep shit from going in. Uh, so, there's those two stabilizer cylinders. We got those torn apart. I gotta clean all this crap up. put them back together but I gotta get the seals first so that'll be the disassembly I'll make another video on uh, cleaning all this crap up and putting them back together on these especially these these uh, dust seals on the end here at the end of the head 
I clean this up really good here and then I take bearing mount Loctite that green bearing mount put in here to keep you seen how that one there had that seal that had rode up the rod and was sticking out down here That'll keep that from happening. It's really notorious for doing that kind of stuff but This rod here's beat up a little bit and that's why it was leaking so bad Well, that's probably what initially started tearing it up I don't know if you can see that we got a lot of cleanup to do on this rod. I'm trying to make it last. I'm sorry, there's a bolt on the end of this. See that big scratch down the side of it there? I'll take a die grinder with a flapper wheel and try to take the roughness out of it, is all you can do. And maybe it'll seep a little bit, but it'll be, you know, for a rod, for a stabilizer cylinder, it won't leak. It won't leak like it is. It won't pour out of there, but it'll it'll have a seepage to it. It's either that or spend a thousand dollars and have the rod rechromed, you know, so or get a new rod. So I, I don't know. So most of the time, I tell them guys what it costs to do those rods and get the quotes from them, and they go, oh, just clean it up, and put it back together. So okay, thanks guys.